All right, so this video is going to be a little bit longer because uh, I want to talk about something that's, uh, I think, very important. Regarding the OLED light and regarding the HDR, uh, now I just want people to understand when I make a recommendation for OLED light to be set to 73 and the contrast to 95, what I'm basically trying to do here is I'm trying to uh, help those of you who are not familiar with the OLED panel and how OLED panel works, trying to give some tips to some newcomers out there who are not disciplined, who don't understand how to use the OLED, that's for whom that's implemented, you know. So that way, if they leave the OLED at 73%, the longevity of their OLED will be much longer. Because the majority of regular Joes and regular Marys, when they leave the OLED light at 100 and contrast at 100, they will forget. They will never turn this off because they don't understand the technology and they think this is something that always needs to be like this, okay? For me personally, I have my presets and I know how to watch. Remember guys, when I do these videos, I'm not doing these videos for me. I'm doing these videos for regular Joes, regular Marys who don't understand. Okay, obviously I don't watch my HDR OLED movies and video games. I don't watch it at 73%, okay? I leave it at 100 and at 100, okay? But this is for the people who are new to the OLED. Okay, and that's the main reason why I came back to the OLED to help those out there who are skeptical about the OLED and who don't understand how the OLED technology works. All right, now we're going to switch to the game uh, game mode HDR. We're going to switch it here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go back. This is uh, currently I'm using a um, HDR game mode. There it is. The OLED lights after the 100. Contrast set to the 100, brightness of 50, sharpness of 10, that's fine. Uh, we got the color here set to 55. Color temperature, I'm going to leave it at 0. People ask me, why do I leave the color temperature at 0? Because I don't want it to be too cold. For the video games, I don't want it to be too cold, nor I don't want it to be too warm. Meaning, I don't want it to be blue. Or yellow I want it to be in the middle right here C stands for cold and W stands for warm so I like to keep it here in the balanced zero for the movies obviously you want to go ahead with a uh, you want to go with a warm color but this is for the game so color temperature keep it at balanced zero Advanced controls, dynamic contrast, uh, I would keep it at high because you want to get uh, that nice, uh, vibrant HDR, keep it at high. Dynamic tone mapping, leave it on. Dynamic color, uh, this is something that I would use as well, but I would keep it at medium because you don't want to oversaturate the color too much. Keep it at medium. Uh, color gamut, leave it at wide. Super resolution, you can keep this at medium, but this only takes the effect if you're using it for the uh, regular 1080p content. You know, this is not going to take any effect here on the uh, 4K native 4K source Crackdown 3 that we're playing right now. Um, what else? Hold on a second. And gamma, obviously. We don't need to mess with that because uh, we are in the game mode. We're fine. So this is what I'm using basically for the game mode. So now another thing I want to say, it's really important that you guys save the presets. Okay. Uh, so that way, once you uh, customize these presets, make sure you customize all of your presets. When you uh, purchase your TV, customize the game mode HDR presets. Customize the standard mode non-HDR presets. 
customize the cinema HDR mode presets and customize the Dolby Vision HDR presets and customize your sports presets. So that way, when you switch to HDR and on HDR, it's already set for you. So you don't have to go back and forth constantly and, and do this. This is why I recommend that you guys do this in advance when you purchase your TV. So that way you don't have to worry about it. A lot of people uh, forget to save their presets. And then they have to go back and forth, back and forth, you know. So, and this is the Crackdown 3 right now. There it is. Uh, it looks beautiful. Look, this game runs great. Uh, another thing I want to talk about uh, this uh, E8 OLED is the fact that uh, the motion flow uh, on the uh, E8, it's really good. The Alpha 9 processor does a great job implementing that motion flow fast moving uh soap opera imagery picture and uh it's very impressive it looks very impressive also the input lag low latency on this television on the game mode it's about 21 millisecond which is pretty darn good uh for an OLED so that's due to the uh A9 processor that you have that low latency and it really looks great. I was really impressed, you know, coming back from C7 and C6 and B6, uh, it's definitely a huge difference here in terms of uh, load latency on the, the game mode. Now this is Crackdown 3. Uh, we're gonna move back on to uh, another game. We're gonna move back to Metro Exodus, just to show you Metro Exodus really quick all right here's the Metro Exodus so there's the Metro Exodus now I do want to address one thing is the uh, the gamma the gamma here needs to be adjusted this is something that evil Boris has talked about uh, the gamma levels really needs to be adjusted here because currently right now hold on uh, my exposure light in my camera is just I would move the gamma levels a little bit high because currently the Microsoft and the uh, Xbox they're having some issue with the gamma level on their games this issue has been addressed by both um, Digital Foundry and Evil Boris HDR and I trust both of them and even I noticed it that the gamma levels are not where they need to be so this is something that the best way to adjust this is just move your gamma levels up a little bit okay and you will see a much better difference you will see a much better definition on the characters okay all right so here we are with the uh hdr and the gamma see when you move the gamma a little bit see you get much better definition on the uh, the dark areas right here so what I basically did it's move the gamma levels a bit up because this is OLED and you know you're gonna need a little bit of that gamma to go up especially for the Xbox version because the Xbox been having some issues with the uh, gamma levels on their games so make sure you move that gamma uh, just slightly up a little bit and now you get a much better definition. Now you see things much better. Okay. So for the game mode, leave the HDR at the 100 OLED light. And leave the contrast at the 100. Okay. That's so you can take the advantage of the HDR gaming. However, make sure that you save your presets. If you don't save your presets, then... You're always going to have the OLED light at the 100, you know. And this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid of that some of you will always have your OLED light set to 100 on standard and on HDR. Uh, if you can discipline yourself, this is what I, I want to say. If you can discipline yourself, I'm talking to uh, a noobs, if you will. I hate to use the word noobs, but let's say you are a noob. You're somebody who just got an OLED 
and you don't know much about the OLED, right? So for you, I would recommend that uh, when you finish watching HDR, or when you finish playing HDR game, let me adjust my low light a little bit here. Here we go. When you finish watching uh, HDR movie or when you finish watching HDR game, I would recommend that you go ahead and uh, switch back to your standard picture mode and move that OLED light to 73 when you're not watching the HDR. If you can do this, if you can, you know, memorize this, I would uh, highly suggest that you do this. And the main reason why I went back to the OLED is to help you guys, to give you some pointers, some key pointers, some tips on how to do this. Now, currently, as you can see right here, we are on the uh, HDR user. See, I already have saved my preset. So I don't have to worry about it. You see, I don't have to worry about it. My preset has been saved. My game user presets on HDR have been saved. So whenever I'm watching the HD, whenever I'm playing the HDR game, the uh, OLED light will be set to 100 and contrast will be set to 100. And this is true. If you want to take the advantage of the tone mapping of the HDR, you're going to have to have that OLED light and contrast set to the maximum. So you can appreciate what the HDR can do. This is true. I'm not disagreeing with this. I'm just simply saying that if you can remember to save your preset, save this preset. So when you go back to the standard HDR, I mean to your standard 9 HDR, that way you will go back to 73% OLED light. Do you guys catch my drift, what I'm trying to say? Hopefully I'm not confusing. When you are watching a or playing a game in HDR, have the user preset where you select, customize it yourself, and then save it. So when you are not playing HDR game mode on the OLED, when you finish with the HDR game mode on the OLED, and you go back to the standard uh, picture settings, it will automatically go back to 73%. But also make sure that your standard picture settings are set to 73%, okay? Don't leave your standard picture settings to 100% OLED light. You don't need that 100% OLED light on your standard picture settings on non-HDR contact. What I'm trying to say is if you're not watching HDR content, have a preset at 73% at the standard picture settings. If you are using HDR, make sure that it's set at the 100 OLED and 100 contrast. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to uh, come about here. You see, right now, this is HDR game mode. And here, OLED light is set to 100, contrast set to 100. All right? Here, we are good. But when you exit out of this, when you want to go back to, let's say, uh, standard, you want to use the... Uh, HDR mode anymore and, and you get out of it make sure that your standard is set to 73% let's say I want to exit out of here you see I have exited out of my HDR and now my HDR game mode it's at 73 so make sure that you custom uh, preset these settings so Whenever you turn on the HDR content, it will automatically go back to the 100 because it remembered your custom user uh, interpretation that you have implemented, okay, on it. So, see, this way, when you're not using the HDR, the OLED light goes automatically back to 73. When you go back to the HDR game, it's going to go back to the OLED 100% and contrast 100%. All right. And this is something that you guys need to do when you purchase your OLED. Make sure that you have all of your presets customized and saved. Okay? If you do this, if you customize it, it will remember it. 
it will remember it and you'll never have to worry about it. So whenever you are watching an HDR movie, automatically it's going to go back to 100% OLED and 100% contrast. Whenever you're not using the HDR mode and you're switching to a non-HDR, it will automatically go back to 73. But you have to select it. You see, if you don't do this manually, it will not go back to 73. So hopefully this clarifies. I hope I'm not confusing you guys with this. If this is confusing, please do let me know and I will try to explain it on the, uh, the comment section. What I'm basically trying to say, when you're not using the HDR, have a preset, have all of your presets custom adjusted. Your non-HDR game, OLED 73%. Your HDR game mode, 100% OLED and 100% contrast. Your HDR movie mode, 100% OLED light, 100% contrast. Your non-HDR movie mode, 73% and 95% contrast. And then 73% on OLED light. And it goes for the, for the everything else. So hopefully this is a helpful tip to help you guys out with this and uh, if you do this if you select this I think uh, you will have a much longer longevity on your OLED obviously it's also important to remember uh, what kind of content are you watching uh, like for example if I leave and I go to gym or if I go somewhere else and I come back tonight at 9 o'clock and I forgot to turn my OLED TV and I leave it like this there will be a burn-in. I will eventually get a burn-in. So this is something you need to remember to do. Turn it off. If you're not using it, just turn it off. It's really simple. How long it took me? Not even a half a second. Before you get your ass out of the house, go to the gym or whatever you got to do, turn it off. Turn it off. From whom are you going to leave it for? Ghosts, uh, hypothetically speaking. But just try to have some kind of discipline. Try to make a habit. You know, where you remember, hey, dude, uh, I'm not going to be using this TV for today. I'm going to turn it off. Leave it. Turn it off. Turn it off. And that's it. It's it's very simple, guys. And, and this is what I recommend that you guys do. So uh, hopefully this video helps you out, guys, a little bit and, and clarified some confusion. Remember, the main reason why I came back to the OLED, it's to help you guys out for those of you who are skeptical for those of you who are not familiar with the OLED panel and for those of you who heard all these horror stories about the uh, potential burn-in and retention on the screen that's for whom I really am intending these videos for to help you guys out for those of you who are on the fence for those of you who are veterans who had OLED before you know what to do you know how to uh, fix this problem how to adjust these issues so for, for you, you know what to do. Okay? So I'm not worried about you guys. Alright, well there you have it guys. Hopefully this video helps. Thank you.